morning beloved saints I wanted to get something across to you guys um, because I know every one of us have felt like this I wish I could start the day over right I used to tell my son why do you have to wait to sleep to start the day over start it over right now there's no rule that you have to wait till you go to bed and just go sit down shut your eyes breathe and say it's a new day right now it's a new moment start again you don't have to wait till the next morning you know you've heard people say you woke up on the wrong side of the bed just like everything is just wrong that day but as burdened as we get and as grieved as we get with either life people in our lives work worry about our family you know life's problems some things are unjust maybe persecution maybe you're being picked on bullied whatever um Whatever it is, we all suffer some sort of it throughout our lives. And I don't know how people that don't have this assurance, that don't have this like hope of, of I know I'm with him. I know that my God is good. I know that I'm his child. I know he's going to take care of me. And no matter if he allows me to endure this, if he doesn't deliver me from this situation, then he's going to use it for good somehow. And may he be glorified. May I grow from it. May another person benefit in some way. I know that it, it's for a greater purpose, right? And there's a comfort and a peace in that. And it, it it's confusing to me why so many are telling others to not be secure in their salvation. To not stand on God's promises or... Uh, stand on what Christ has done his death burial and resurrection as if it's enough because they're like well he did that but if you're not living this way if you're not doing that if you're not it's like they it's blatant work salvation is what it is they don't understand the gospel at all and they think that us believing the gospel is our way of still doing things I think they think are sinful that we like I, I don't know what they think we're doing but uh, I'm daily, I'm studying my scripture, I'm counseling people, I'm talking to the Lord, I'm uh, helping uh, uh, people in trauma or that are in need. And, you know, it's like, I, I don't have time for simple stuff because I'm busy worrying about the Lord, thinking about the Lord's business. So it's really a weird accusation. And so the love of Christ constraineth us. And... Even here, in this section of Lamentations, I want to read. Now, we know Solomon departed. He built uh, Moloch temples because he was carried away because of his wives. He loved women. Had over 700 wives and like over 1,000 concubines or something. It was crazy. And uh, the Lord came to him personally and warned him not to do this. And he did. And it, it, you see his grief and his um, depression later on in life, how it's all vanity, it's worthless. Uh, only thing that's important is, is being close to the Lord, doing what the Lord says is right. Um, that's peace, that's love, that's prosperity, that's joy. And he, he gets it, right? He gets it. But even here, you get to see here in Lamentations 3. Now, this is his emotion, He's feeling like God has done these things to him. These, these are emotions, feelings. It doesn't mean God has done it, right? It's, it's, you know, I think it's hyperbole. I think it's uh, exaggeration for effect. Um, so that we can understand how desperate, how far, right? And then you can see on the opposite side, this hope. Because even Solomon here uh, says it is good for man to hope 
for God, and wait on God's salvation. So I want to uh, show you this every day. You don't have to wait till you go back to sleep and wake up. If you're having one of those days and you feel like it's on a streak, start it over. If that's keeping you back, just start it over anytime. Go in a room and breathe and talk to the Lord. Say, it's a new day right now. I'm, I'm moving forward. Uh, so you don't postpone your happiness. Okay. So I just wanted to share this uh, with you every day. God's mercies are renewed. Every day, His grace super abounds, hyper abounds, whatever words they hate, for God's graciousness given to all of us. Uh, and we love Him so. We understand. Even if we're doing the best we can, it's still we're still not good. And so it is not about us. We will not boast. It is only Jesus. And we thank him for working in us and helping us to grow. But that has nothing to do with him saving us. We are just dead and, and couldn't qualify for it at all. So with that being said, I'm, I'm not really going to stop. I'm just going to read this. I'll put the verses on screen so you can see them. And I won't need to say much because you'll see it there. And I hope this uh, encourages you today. I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He hath made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people, and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes, and thou hast removed This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Okay, now that we've read it, Let's pay attention to something here. And I know we've all felt like, you know, God has turned against us. Either we've done something so wrong, there, it, it, all these terrible things are happening because of what I've done, or something's happened, it's not fair. You know, whatever it is, it can feel like this. It feels like every area of your life, right? There's no hope, just utter despair. But then, let's look. Let, let's look at this one more time. My soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. So all of that pain, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. What is he recalling? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 
You guys love that song? Great is thy faithfulness. I love that. And I'm always boasting that it's God's faithfulness, not our own, that's maintaining salvation. This is what he recalls to his mind, despite all that. This is what he recalls to his mind and therefore has hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Once again, start the day over anytime, anytime you want. You don't have to wait till you go to bed and get back up. It is of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed. People, thank God, owe them something. He doesn't get, they don't get that compared to this holy God, God doesn't owe us anything except the wages for our sin, which is death. And in his mercy, he took care of that. He is love. He loves his children. Doesn't mean we're not going to have bad things happen. It doesn't mean that life's going to be fair. It doesn't mean any of that. But it's, it does mean that God is good. And I know that whatever I'm going through, whether it's a consequence of something I've done, or even if it's unjust, if God has allowed this in his child's life, he will make something good from it. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. This is all I'm screaming from the rooftops. Trust in the Lord. Find your hope in him. Stand strong in his promises. He doesn't lie. He will never leave you or forsake you. He is always faithful. His mercy endures forever. His mercies are new every day. I, I want you to see that. It is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Solomon had everything. He had everything. Vanity. It is only in the Lord can we find true joy and purpose and fulfillment. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Did y'all hear that? It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. God will deliver his children and he has delivered us from death. He doesn't want us to question it. He wants us to know this hope is biblical hope. It's a sure thing that God has said is ours. And right here it tells us it is a good thing to hope and wait for the Lord's salvation. At this time, the Lord hadn't come yet. His salvation is a person. We know that it's Jesus. But in general, you can be saved from anything, delivered from anything, rescued from anything. And so in this case, it's delivered from this despair. And a spark of hope comes up because he remembers how good the Lord is. And that no matter what, regardless of whether God is doing this, whether God's allowing this, whether he deserved it, whether he did none of that matters right here. Because even in this despair, a glint of hope comes. And what is that? Well, that God is compassionate. If he held against us, if he counted all the little things we do in thought, word, and deed against us, no one would stand. That his compassion goes on and on. That his mercy endures. That he is faithful. That he is good. And that he will save his children. So, I hope that this gives you some peace, no matter where you are, what you're feeling. It is temporary, and you can start your day over at any time, and every day, God's mercies are renewed. It's not like you run out of them. Even if in your head you did, well, I used too much of his mercy, well, tomorrow it starts right back up, fills, fills the jug right back up for you. It's just a, a beautiful thing to think about. You guys have a blessed day. Bye.